The following is a segment from a Mutari-sponsored webinar on the FCC's Hospital Robocall Protection Group findings, detailing the specific threats and actions needed to combat fraudulent robocall activity within healthcare organizations. Visit our YouTube channel for the full presentation. So if they believe they're receiving these calls, um, training them, educating them, they should look to gather the data on the call itself. So staff should be trained to under, to document the date and time of the call, the number being dialed, type of calls, is it a recording, is it a live person, um, what did they say, so forth, what was the caller ID number um, uh, identified. Protect the data, as I said, don't give out any sensitive information. And then there should be a plan or process in place for the staff to report this to the appropriate personnel within the hospital, whether it's the chief security, security department, telecommunications, preferably both, if it's a criminal act involved there. Um, and then, you know, having a process, a governance process in place uh, to receive that information, to work internally to understand the origination of these calls, and then work with appropriate law enforcement and regulatory agencies and the voice service providers to help stop those calls i had a recommendation that um um i really i mean those are excellent points and there is a place i would say within the hospitals where this um, process can be defined um like i mentioned i used to work with hipaa privacy and security and so look hospitals know that they have to have a breach notification procedure part of my breach notification procedures included my data assessment so even if Let's say you have a small breach and it has to qualify for when do we make it public, right? There's all kinds of reporting for requirements yep. around your data breach. That's the, that is the best place to go to to establish your uh, fraud breach. I mean, this is, this is maybe not so much a data breach, but treat it like that because you've already got some established required processes. You may not have to do the reporting that would be specific to um, PHI being uh, breached. But that evaluation process, you've already got all the proper people within the hospital identified of who's supposed to sign off on this, review it, and then make the decisions on what you do next. You should be doing is updating those um, procedures to include the specific data you need for um, this type of assessment. And then I know what you're gonna go into next is, you know, what do you do with it? So you can almost create like a grid or a chart of, is this a PHI breach, yes or no, is this a, you know, a fraud breach under the robocall issues, yes or no, and then have that path of, okay, what do we do then as an organization if we have this type? And then you just keep repeating that process over and over and your team will be, you know, well-seasoned and being able to execute that assessment quickly because time is always a matter when it comes to this, very specifically when we get into that next part of bringing in the law enforcement. So I don't know if you have any other thoughts on that, but that's just kind of my idea of where would I recommend to put this process? Yeah, totally agree. There should be that governance process outlined again for breaches of data. In theory, this these may be breaches of data, but none that not that require reporting under the Office of Civil Rights requirements to, uh, for more than 500 individuals. But again, you know, what is the impact here? What I've seen is that in some of hospitals, they're failing to connect the dots, right? Somebody might be aware a patient received a call, Somebody else might be aware that a uh, staff member received a suspicious call, not realizing that these might all be part of a related campaign by a sophisticated criminal organization to steal information from the, from the hospital and or in fact use that to gain access to hospital systems. So yes, that evaluation and then the classification. Is this an unlawful call? Is it a nuisance call? As you said, the checklist, absolutely legal, compliance, security, telecommunications uh, involved there. And of course, uh, there is the aspect that if the information's actually been given by a patient or a staff member, now you actually have a crime. If they've given out information and it's determined to be to a fraudulent entity, um, the patient themselves will want some type of uh, response from the hospital. The hospital has to examine as well what is their role, responsibility, and potential liability exposure if they're allowing these calls to come through to patients, and especially if there's been prior reporting. Uh, they need to understand what measures they should have taken or should be taking to prevent the patient from uh, receiving these calls. So beyond the technical issue, 
there is a really business risk decision here as well, preventing that legal and regulatory exposure you may have uh, for your patients and staff.